How can we practically use the seven hermetic principles? After all, isn't that the entire reason of our study of these matters? Is not the reason we do this to learn how we can actually affect our own reality and manifest what we desire? A lot of videos and other content out there simply explain the laws, but leave it at that. I've done that in the previous videos. I've made one video for every hermetic principle or law. This video, however, will revolve around a brief summary of the laws and principles, but really delve into how you can use each one of these and have them work with each other to start implementing them in your life. As I've already talked about in the individual videos themselves, mere knowledge of these principles can be beneficial. But of course they are the most useful when you actually start using them in practical ways. So let us begin. The first hermetic principle, of course, is the law of mentalism. The principle that describes that the all is mind. We talked about, in my main video, on this law. A very long video, it turned out to be, for a reason. It is by far the most difficult to comprehend principle out of them all, in my opinion. And to fully comprehend it requires much meditation and practice. This law in and of itself really is the basis of all we do here. What we do is we use our mind to bring about change in our reality. But I found the most practical implementation of this principle when you combined it with the second one, the principle of correspondence, as above, so below, as within, so without. If we have determined that the all is mind, and we know that the above should mirror the below, and vice versa, then that means that our own personal small mind is similar to that of the all, the all mind, the divine mind, if you will. Meaning that if all is created in the divine mind, then so we can create our own, I wouldn't call lesser mind, but a reflection of the all, a more personal mind of source. Of course, there are three types of minds. I can highly recommend you to rewatch my video on this principle as, again, I do not wish to repeat everything We've discussed there. I hope that you can see that knowledge of these two principles really is the basis of manifestation, of the law of attraction, and of what other people practice in mystical circles and occult circles. Now if we know that we can create with our mind, then the first thing you should do is take good care of your thoughts, as of course your mind is built upon thoughts. Now, if you are inexperienced, if you have never meditated before, and if you're new to all of this, it might seem that you do not control your thoughts, that they simply appear. And in a way that is true, they might appear, but it is up to you to accept their truth. Now one thing you should start doing as a daily practice, and if you do, you will see remarkable results within a month or two, three, four. Your entire life will change if you do this. Simply, whenever a negative thought occurs, for example being, I am poor, or I can't buy that, I don't, do not have enough money to do so, or I'm tired, or the weather is very bad today. Any thoughts of, any negative thoughts, any thoughts that you do not wish to be true but feel are, simply cancel them out. When a thought like that occurs, 
tell the thought no. Tell the thought I do not accept you. Now you can do this verbally, of course, this might be a bit awkward when there are people around. So when there are people around, simply do it silently within yourself. But it can actually help to do it out loud when you're by yourself. Whenever a thought like this occurs, simply yell out, no, I do not accept you, thought, I do not accept you. You must really learn to see thoughts as something that you can pick up or not pick up. And of course, you should only accept the good thoughts, the good thoughts that work for you. Thoughts like, today was a very good day for my business. You want to accept that thought. So just as you are not accepting negative thoughts, thoughts that do not suit your purpose, likewise, you want to purposefully and deliberately accept good thoughts that do work for you. So whenever a good thought arises, you say, I accept you, or you embrace it. You, you conjure the feeling of hugging that thought of some sort. And at the beginning, this might all seem very weird and very childish, and you might not really see the purpose of it. But I trust, I, I, I can promise you, if you continue this practice for three, four months, you will see vast changes in your experience in your life. Of course, another thing you can start doing, once you've gained more control of your thoughts, is of course to start conjuring your own thoughts out of nowhere. Now, one way to do this is through affirmations, subliminal messaging, which we'll all discover, and I will explain much more about in future videos. But for now, this simple practice will be of amazing value. If everyone were to do this, the world would be a much better place. Now, of course, the third principle we discussed was the principle of vibration. This principle really is at the base of the law of attraction. When you study it further, first it might seem that the principle of mentalism might be the most important one but real understanding of the principle of vibration can get you so much more than simply imagining. Feeling is power. Feeling is vibration. And of course, this law works perfectly with the principle of polarity. Knowing that love and hate are basically the same emotion, but at different ends of the scale, Emotions are vibration, and when you know that you can simply raise this vibration or lower it to achieve these feelings, a world opens up to you. Now I will post a video in the near future which will describe an exercise on how to learn how to control your emotions and to really feel what vibration is associated with, with, with which emotion. But for now, simply know that you can control your feelings and that you should start doing so. Link this with the previous exercise. Whenever a good thought occurs to you, delve into that thought, embrace it, hug it, and feel it. Feel good. Try and start exaggerate, exaggerating your own feelings. Try to focus on your feelings when you feel good and try to hold on to it. Know that you can maintain this vibration and that by doing so, you will manifest more of the same. When you feel wealthy, you will become wealthy. When you tap into the vibration of wealth, you will be wealthy. You are wealthy. Likewise, when you just simply look at the principle of polarity, use this to your advantage. Most people live in cycles, live at the mercy of the principle of rhythm. One day or a couple of days out of the week they're happy and then they're depressed. And then they're extremely happy again and then they're depressed. And this cycle goes on and on. And some for some people it might be happening multiple times on a day. For some people it might be uh, a very good week and then a very bad week and then a very good week and then a very bad week. For other people it might be months, for other people it might be years. The size of the rhythm 
might be different for everyone, but it still exists. Now, know how to use this. Really focus on these principles when you are at the right rhythm. When you are at the peak of your happiness rhythm, your, your excitement rhythm, your feeling of wealth and feeling that everything is going right, really embrace it. Start conjuring those thoughts. Start accepting it. And whenever things... When you, whenever you move into a more negative rhythm to you, try and ignore it as much as possible. But be aware of it. But reject the thoughts that come with it. Maybe even try rejecting other aspects of that negative rhythm. Now, the sixth principle, the principle of cause and effect. There are no random chances. There is no such thing as chance. Everything has been caused by a previous effect. Now, when we know that the all is mind, and that as above, so below, that our mind resembles that of the great divine all, we know, of course, that the greatest causer of things is the mind itself. Meaning thoughts, meaning positive thoughts or negative thoughts. You have positive thoughts, you have a very positive life. You have negative thoughts, you will have a very negative life. Again, this principle merely adds a level of understanding to the previous exercise I mentioned. Mainly being that you will now start to be the causer of your own life. The future effects that you will receive will be because of your current thoughts of today. And likewise, the life you live today is really only the effect of the negative thoughts or positive thoughts that you have thought of months, years, decades ago. For, some, for many people, because of your parents, because of the subconscious messaging that your parents have given you in your childhood. So for you, it is very important to start and seize control of your, over, over your own subconscious mind. When you start to realize that really nothing is random and everything has been decided by your own thoughts and mental creations, well, then you really should be careful of what you think about. And finally, the principle of gender. A very underrated one, but very important, because once again, it shows us and gives us a deeper level of understanding on how creation works. It works through the feminine and the masculine. The feminine being the subconscious mind and the masculine being the conscious mind. You must impregnate your subconscious mind, which is feminine, which is receiving, which receives everything, which draws everything in it, whatever it sees, whatever it hears, whatever thoughts are accepted, whatever thoughts occur. Therefore, you must be careful on what you impregnate your subconscious mind with. Again, going back to the previous exercise. Really, again, all these principles work together to form one beautiful whole creation it all comes down to creation and expanding and that is what we are doing here we're expanding our own mind and through doing so we are creating whatever we desire and tapping into whatever is out there every possibility to create so be careful of what you feed your feminine mind, your subconscious mind, and make sure that with your masculine mind you give enough power to the impregnation. The power is emotion. When you say affirmations, when you accept these thoughts, for example, a thought occurs that says, I am wealthy, and then you repeat it, repeat it eternally, I accept this thought, I am wealthy. When you just say it without emotion, well, there's no really no force, there's no life energy, there's no powerful vibration to impregnate the subconscious mind. Now, of course, repetition still will have an effect, but you might have to repeat it a million times. But when you add power and life force to your impregnation with your conscious mind, when you 
embrace emotion, when you really feel wealthy and say, I am wealthy, then the subconscious is truly impregnated with a very, very powerful thought that through the law of cause and effect, later on, will bring wonderful things into your life. Now, of course, one thing that I do want to say is patience is important in this matter. Too many people say affirmations, maybe for a week, and then say, well, nothing has changed, I'm still not wealthy, I'll never do this again. But when you look at pregnancy, well, how long does a human pregnancy last? Again, remember, as above, so below. 